What's up everybody, it's Paul from Boosted Films and in this video we're going to change the engine air filter and cabin air filter in this 2009 Chevy Impala. So we're going to start with the engine air filter change on this. So we want to open up our driver's side door and then by the kick panel, by the foot of the driver you pull the hood latch there and your hood will re release and we're going to slide our hand more towards the middle of the car here and then the hood latch releases here you push it off to the right and then you should be able to lift up your hood all the way and on the right side of the frame is our air box that holds our air filter so we're going to have to split this uh, open here uh, before we do that though i'm going to show you right off the bat on the bottom where this sits, where it sits inside these hooks uh, to, to be properly in place. So you can see those there. We're going to come back to that a little bit later. But the first step here is actually just to release these clips at the top. You should be able to just use your thumbs and release uh, the clips. And then to get it out of those bottom slots, you're kind of going to take the top part of this air box um, and push it towards the engine and then come up with it. So we're going to push it towards the en engine and then come up and then that should release it. Now I don't know if there's something missing holding this particular air box in place. You may not have to use two hands like I did, but I kind of had to hold one piece of that air, air box closer to me while I pushed the other portion more towards the, the engine. You can see that one portion of this air box towards the engine has kind of a rubber section that's flexible on it. So, so we're just gonna allow ourselves enough room to pull out this old filter. And again, here's just a view, a better view from the top showing everything so you can get a, a different point of view on this. And you can also see on this bottom part where, again, there are those two spots where it sits in. So you just want to pay attention to those. Just pointing them out now so you know that we're going to come back to this later. Right now it's not in there all the way. And here's uh, how it would be set in just like that when it's done right. Now we're going to check our new air filter and we're going to take a look and compare it to our old one. Just make sure it's very similar. I always like to make sure it's about the same height, width, and depth. And take note, uh, this particular air filter actually is not square. It looks kind of close to being square, but it's not. Uh, so it's more of a rectangular shape. So we got to pay attention to that when we go to reinstall this. So here's just a shot showing that little bit of difference in uh, the height when we compare one side to the other. Uh, and so we're just going to pay attention to that, like I said, as we put it back in. And we're going to actually install this uh, the long way, if you will, not the tall way. That's actually the way it fits. So just like the removal, what I'm going to do here is use one hand, use my arm a little bit to pull that portion of the box back towards me and then use my other hand there to uh, push the other portion of the air box in towards the engine. And you don't have to be super gentle with this. It's not a big deal if, if things move around a little bit. Of course, you just don't want to get any holes in that filter you install. But once it's installed, it should sit pretty flush in there. And then we're going to take our uh, cover here that's closer to the engine. And again, we're going to tip the top portion away from us. And then just I'm taking a second look to try and watch in that bottom part to make sure I have those pieces uh, in where they would push down in. And after I've done that, then I just take these clips at the top and then uh, just close uh, the clamps that are holding it in place. And that's it. You have successfully changed your engine air filter. As you can see, it looks like everything is matched up pretty good here. Going back down to the bottom again, just giving you a shot of those bottom pieces that you want to watch out for. And that's about it. We're going to lower our hood down a little bit and then latch it all the way. And you are done changing your engine air filter. But we're going to change the cabin air filter on this car as well. And typically these are kind of behind the glove box, but this car is actually old enough where the cabin air filter is here, closer to the firewall portion, just below the bottom of our windshield. And there's a plastic piece here that needs to be removed. And we're going to go ahead and take out these two plastic clips. We're going to use a flathead screwdriver here. And these center section of these clips kind of pull out. Uh, if you get a flathead screwdriver in there, you should be able to just kind of twist it a little bit. And then you should be able to pop out the center section of those clips. And that kind of frees up the, the whole area to, to come up because when that center clip is pushed in what it's doing is it's expanding uh, this other part uh, to hold down uh, this overall plastic shield here. 
So the second one is more towards the center of the car. So we're going to move towards that one and we're going to pop out the center portion of that clip as well. You could take out the whole clip. There's kind of a center portion and an outer portion. If it all pulls out, that's fine. You can do that too. But basically, as long as that center portion is out, uh, then this clip is almost, or excuse me, then this uh, guard, this cover is almost free to come out. But first, as you can see here, we're pulling up our weather stripping because the weather stripping actually helps hold uh, this cover in place a little bit too. So we're going to pull that out to about halfway up the middle of the firewall here. And then after that, uh, just watch for your windshield wiper sprayer line, uh, that black hose that's running to this. Just be mindful of that. Um, but you should be able to start pulling up this plastic portion here. Right now I'm working at a piece by the fender. Uh, the upper portion of the fender there, it kind of sits in there a little bit. Uh, so we're going to pull that up a, a bit and just get that free as well. And you may not actually have to do that. Um, I think I was thinking I was going to initially remove this whole cover, uh, but it come to find out you don't have to remove this whole piece. Uh, you just need to lift up this cover and it will expose another cover underneath. Uh, so there's uh, the back of my head, sorry about that. Um, but behind that shot, once we get to it, there's another plastic uh, cover piece in here that just kind of sits in there. There's a couple protruding parts where it pushes in place, but uh, as you can see here, we're just going to lift that up and that's actually our cabin air filter underneath it. You got a peek at that. But really all we need to do here is pull out this plastic piece. And once we've done that, we will have access to our cabin air filter. The cabin air filter itself also has a little piece on it, a little tag almost that you can pull uh, to get this out. You may or may not have to use that, but then you should be able to pull out your old cabin air filter. This one's obviously pretty old and hasn't been changed in a while. And we're just gonna take a peek in here um, you can see the blower motor in there and pay attention to some of these prongs. There's some prongs that make it plastic prongs on the top part that make it harder to get to. So we're going to come back to that in a second, but first here's our new cabin air filter. So of course, just like the engine air filter, we're going to take a second look, uh, make sure that it's about the same size as the one we took out. We're also going to note the airflow direction, which is going to be down as the airflow is kind of coming in from the top and working down to that blower motor. So there's also this tab on that one that also kind of gives you a hint about the airflow direction because you want that tab up. I think in theory that tab is for you to grab onto to pull this up and out. So as I mentioned briefly earlier, this is what you want to watch for. You got to get it underneath those plastic parts that are protruding out. There's one on the left side, one on the right side, and you can see here the one on the right and then the one on the left. So those kind of make it the trickiest to actually get this filter in place. However, they are part of what really holds it down. Um, so just something that you need to watch for. I will say it just took a little bit for me to kind of find the right way to finagle this thing in there, um, but it, obviously you can do it. Uh, I just don't think I can give you any specific tips um, other than don't be afraid to bend it a little bit. Um, I think I had to bend a portion of it down to get it underneath um, and once I knew it was underneath those plastic pieces it kind of just sat right in there and was good to go but of course in general just take your time while you're doing this so there you go you can see it's underneath those tabs and it's sitting pretty flush if you want to take a vacuum in there clean some of the other stuff out um, I didn't show that on camera but uh, that's something you could do too just to vacuum out all the other stuff even before you put your new filter in so here's the, the tabs on this other plastic piece here, and we want to reinstall those. There's a lip that they kind of sit on. Uh, so we're going to put the three tabs on top of that metal lip, and then the rest of the, the cover sits kind of underneath it. And here's just a closer look, so you can take a double check, and this is what it looked like when we put that other cover in place. And now we're going to double check that hose. We need to reconnect that hose. That's for the windshield wiper sprayer. And then we can set down this first cover that we removed. And once that's flat, you should be able to put that weather stripping back in place. So that should kind of just push back on in place. So we're going to do that here. And also for this cover, closer to the windshield side, there's a portion too that I don't think I showed on camera where I realized it was sticking up a bit. So I kind of had to push it down um, and 
and get it in place. I'll, I'll show that in a second here, uh, but just something to be mindful of that uh, you want to watch up towards the windshield portion too. And of course, if you did remove the part by the fender, go ahead and push that back in place as well. And we can't forget our clips. We're going to put that bottom portion of, uh, or the outside portion, I should say, of that clip in first. And then that center portion should just push in after. And we'll do both of those, of course. Anything that we remove, we're going to put back in place. And finally, I'm just going to give you a little view uh, from this side up close by the fender so you can see kind of what that looks like. And also here, this part you want uh, should look pretty flat. If it's protruding much higher than this, again, you may want to double check. There's a slot that that uh, first cover that we took off needs to kind of slide into or just make sure it's pushed down a little bit to get in there. But that's it. You have successfully changed your engine air filter and cabin air filter on your 2009 Chevy Impala. So there you have it. That's it for this video, guys. I appreciate everybody watching. And of course, if I did anything wrong, the internet loves to let people know if they did. So check the comments. There may be comments uh, fixing something, or maybe you found a better way of doing something than I did it. You probably got a better term for something that I referred to wrong. Uh, but yeah, just check the comments. Uh, look for any updates potentially in the comments or the video description. Also, if you want to do me a favor, if this helped you out, please let me know in the comment section down below. Um, also, if it worked on a similar vehicle, maybe not the exact same model or not the exact same year, but if the process was very similar for you, if you could comment uh, what your, your make model was and if it worked for you or if there were any differences, that'd be great because that just might help out someone else watching this video to verify whether or not this would work for their particular car. But again, as always, this is Paul from Boosted Films saying thanks so much for watching.